Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab where we are going over every single Monterey UI component and in today's video we're going to be covering the radio component and the radio group components. Now this component, similarly to the checkbox component, is pretty simple when you use it on its own. Of course, there's a lot of form control stuff you can do outside of the actual components to have custom functionalities, but in this video we're specifically going to focus on the bare basics you need to know to just use this component in the most common use cases. And if you find value in this video, make sure you leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions it helps a lot with the youtube algorithm and make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe if you want to learn more about material ui and react so let's jump into this component as we can see a radio button is pretty much the exact same thing as a radio button in html and the default behavior is the user will most likely have a couple of different selections for example in this case we have a gender selection and you can see here that you can choose between any of these three options that they have when you click one it will automatically unhighlight the other one and the way that they currently do this is they wrap it around something called a radio group this radio group component will be pretty much used whenever you have a group of radio elements and you want to just wrap sort of um, the actual radios inside of it. Now, if we look at the code example, you can see here we have the radio group and then inside of here, they have something called a form controlled label and then they have inside of the control prop the actual radio component. Now, the reason they do this is because this sort of keep track, uh, this form control label keeps track of number one, the actual value that that radio component has. And number two, it also gives it a label so that, for example, beside the actual radio itself, you can see that it has each one of these options labeled with text. Now, in the actual radio group itself, um, you can see that we're passing in a default value and we set that equal to one of the values that shows up here. And then it will check which one of these form control labels have that value and then it will by default set it. So this is also wrapped around a form control and then they have a form label which pretty much just has the label. This is the default way to use pretty much this component if you're using what's called an uncontrolled input. Uncontrolled versus controlled inputs. When you have a controlled input, it means that you personally have a state variable that you are keeping track of the value in. And most of the time, you'll probably be using this, especially if you need to use the value for something or if you actually need to go ahead and, you know, maybe populate some of the form information with default values. A lot of the times, you're going to by default use a controlled uh, example. This example is what is known as an uncontrolled, aka you don't pass or hold the state in any specific specific variables that you create, but within the components themselves, they actually uh, keep track of what the actual state is. The next thing you can do um, with the uh, actual radio group component is you can pass in a prop called row. And if you pass in the prop by default, it's false. But if you pass in the row prop, it will set it uh, to true. And then it will pr simply just align the options in a row instead of stacked on top of each other, uh, each other vertically. So if we open this up, you can see that they just pass in the row component. And now here we have a example of a controlled uh, form. So for the controlled form, you would do the exact same things except this time you would pass a value prop into the radio group. This value prop is going to be stored within probably a variable in your React. So you can see here they have a React state variable. They set the default to female and then they keep track of the actual value and the set value. And for the value, they pass it into the radio group as a prop. And on the on change prop, you can pretty much just pass in a function um, the, uh, that will just call the set value um, uh, setter function for that state variable you made with the event.target.value, which is the default way to actually get the value of any, you know, standard HTML input. Um, it will be in this event.target.value thing. So essentially what's happening here, whenever they click an option, this on this handle change function uh, triggers, which passes in the event, uh, the click event, and that click event also has the value of what they clicked, which is passed in through, you know, uh, you know, if they click on this one, the value will be male. If they click on this one, the value will be female. And then it will go ahead and set our state variable to that. And because our state variable is being passed into the radio group, it will then go ahead and set the actual value of it as a whole. And this is probably the use case you'll be using the most. So if you had to copy and paste one of these to just get a simple radio form working in your code, I would highly recommend just copy and pasting this one in because it's probably going to be uh, the most common use 
useful one because if, for example, you are sending this data off or if you need to show something different, depending on which object, uh, which variable they selected, you actually have uh, the variable here and you can just use that value in any way that you need, whether it's sending it off to an API call or showing something different. Um, so now we're going to get into some of the other props. Oh, and before we do, you can see that you can also have a radio just on its own. If you didn't want to use a radio group and if you didn't want to, you know, use the uh, the label and stuff like that, you can actually just pass it in on its own. And to do that, the if it, you would still have, you know, your uh, state variable. And the only difference is instead of keeping track of which one is selected through the radio group component by passing the value, each one of these, you would have a checked prop and you would have to specify when it should be checked. So for example, if this is option A and this is option B, if the state variable has option A in it, then uh, this one would show because you have a Boolean, uh, you have a conditional statement here that says, if the selected value is A, then you pass in true for checked. And handle on change would be very similar. You would just, um, you know, give the actual radio element a value, and then the on change would just set it to uh, set your state variable to that value. So that's also another way to use radio components if you don't want to use uh, the radio group, and if you don't want to use the form control um, and any labels and stuff like that. So if you have a really, really, really basic choice, maybe between two different options, it might make sense to just go with the short form one, but I think it makes a bit more sense uh, and the code is a bit more readable when uh, you have a lot more options if you just use the way they had it here with the radio group because you only have to pass in you know, uh, the value um, and the on change handler one time into a single component as opposed to all these different conditional statements um, for each individual radio. Now the next thing you can control is size, just like almost every other uh, Matil UI component. So in the first example, the by default, the size is going to be medium, and there's two sizes you can pass in, either medium or small. By default, it's medium, but if you pass in small, it'll just make the radio button a bit smaller. And then they show how using the SX prop, you can go ahead and change the actual size uh, to whatever, you know, a bit bigger than what you want it to by using a, a global CSS um, selector. And if you're not too familiar with that, you can go ahead and check out my video that I'm going to link in the description of the SX prop where they talk, all, where I talk all about that. And also just know that for every Matil UI component, you're going to have a little CSX section that has a bunch of global CSS classes you can target if you wanted to change um, the actual stylings and in this case you can pass in you can know you can target the root of the component and set the font size to be bigger so it shows bigger and you can also target you know uh you know uh if the actual radio has the disable prop for example if the user isn't allowed to select that one um you can target the mui disabled uh, uh css class and you can set it um to show different stylings depending on whether it's disabled or whether it's checked and a whole bunch of other uh small little things like that um, and the same thing goes for the color. By default, the color is going to be the standard material UI color. Um, and each material UI component has a theme injected. And by default, if you don't override that theme, uh, it's going to be a blue color for the primary, which is the default. And then if you set the color equal to secondary, um, it'll be this purplish color. Success is always going to be green by default. Default is always going to be gray. And then you can set it to custom colors as well. You can see here that they pass in the SX prop and they target um, this color. So in one case, they set the color to this custom material UI pink that they imported from their colors library. Um, and then if it is checked, they specifically um, overwrite that pink to be sort of a lighter uh, version of the pink. So you can see here when it's unchecked, it's sort of a darker pink. Then when you click it, it turns into a slightly lighter pink. So they give you an example of how to order overwrite that. Of course, you can also with the uh, form control label, you can control where you want the actual um, label to show up. So by default, it's at the end of the component. So on the right side of it, uh, of the radio. But if you want it to be, for example, on the top, you can target label equals top over here. Um, and you know, uh, label placement, sorry, will be top. Um, and then you can also pass in label placement start and bottom, depending on where you want it uh, to be. And um, then they have some more complex examples here. So for example, if you wanted to show, you know, oh, you got the answer wrong or whatever, this has more to do with the actual form control than it does the radio component itself. So I will go over that in a separate video when I talk about the whole form, all these form uh, components, because they don't have any straight up examples of them as a whole. Um, but don't worry too much about that if you're just using the radio component. And then of course, the final thing they have, um, like they do on every material UI component, is just an example where they completely change the style of it to look completely different, just to give you some idea of how if you really, really, really want to add a, a 
bunch of custom CSS, how you would be able to do that. So, um, you know, it, if you're not, you know, completely changing how it looks, I wouldn't worry too much about this example. And that's pretty much it for this component. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment or if you have any questions. And like I said, I'm going over every single material I component in detail, just like this one. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.